as is the media, because it's quite often run by young people, and they don't really want to talk about cancer. They often haven't had any experience of it. When I wanted to leave Watchdog and make programmes about cancer, uh, my uh, boss at the BBC then, who now happens to be the Director General of the BBC, Mark Thompson, said, people won't watch it. So I made a programme with the ironic title, I'm afraid doctors, of Doctor Knows Best on GP training in cancer symptoms in the UK at that time, 10.2 million viewers. I made a programme on colon cancer, but I disguised it as a football programme because our footballer, Bobby Moore and I, were both diagnosed with the same specialist at the same time and his wife appeared in the programme. Six and a half million people and I got 28,000 letters. When you're doing screening campaigning or trying to get it in the media, if you're trying to reach people in, as in England, 60 to 69, or Scotland, 50 to 74, you disenfranchise all the other people in not, that, not in that age group. So one of the things that I did was I produced a symptoms line. I've also helped to change the symptoms advice for the UK with evidence-based symptoms. And that was three minutes. Now, you wouldn't think me talking about bleeding from your bottom would be the best thing you've ever heard in the UK. But on day one, it got 156,000 attempted calls. And that's just two slots on breakfast television. I can't recommend breakfast television warmly enough, quite apart from the fact my husband's a breakfast television presenter still. Um, it just, when people see something on breakfast, they can then go off and do something about it. They watch it the night before, they think that's interesting, but the next morning they've gone off the boil. So if you want to get your message across, to me, apart from Katie's show, Breakfast Television. <clears throat> now, I'm not going to show you the kind of stuff I've done in the UK. I've been doing it for a long time. But just think about who's the most difficult person, the most unlikely person to talk about screening in your countries and go for them. Here's who it is in the UK, Prince Charles. <laughs> Can you imagine him on every, every news broadcast saying everyone's got to talk about bottoms and bowels? But we did it. Then, you know, think of anything that will get you in the media. Here's one that I did. I rushed out and bought sexy undies. Um, and that was a headline in, in, in a daily newspaper. Um, OK, now, I'm actually... A, a, a change, another life-changing moment in my life was discovering in 1999 that the, the UK, far from being among the best at treating cancer in Europe, was actually among the worst. And it was a horrible shock for the whole country. And Europe has been the biggest driver for change for us. Now, I've become president of the European Cancer Patient Coalition, so I'm heavily involved in Europe. And when we went to Slovenia, we target cu countries that are going to become presidents of Europe because they have a power. And um, in Slovenia, they, this, a, a PR agency um, produced this slide, CE stands for Central and Eastern European Countries, by the way. What's the true attitude towards cancer of ordinary people? Cancer equals certain death and despair. This is what it's like still in a lot of the Eastern European countries. In some countries, uh, the, the rural population thinks that cancer is contagious. So we've got a big job. So one of the things that we thought we might do is sc offer screening to our politicians. Because, you know, if, if politicians won't be screened, why should their voters? Now, I tend to think of America as being really far ahead of us. So I'll bet, you know, in Congress and, and uh, Senate and so on, they've all had colonoscopies. But if not, embarrass the hell out of them. <laughs> also, politicians have got power over the budgets and the health policy. They're bound to find some cancers. You know, there's a lot of them. In the UK, there's 1,400 members of the House of Commons and the House of Lords. We're bound to find some cancers in there, or early cancers. I mean, I hope they're early cancers. Then parliaments. This is a key thing. Parliaments are short-term. Health policy in the UK, and maybe your countries, has been de bedeviled by short-termism. But screening policy needs to be 10 years. Otherwise, you're going to waste money and waste lives. Um, uh, you've already got lots in America, but I'm talking about the countries where they're just starting really on screening or they've done it wrong so far or badly. And so we have to get them thinking 10 years and we have to convince the politicians. I've just been to Bulgaria where they said, right, we're starting screening for colon cancer in August because we've got an election coming up. And I thought, well, that's going to be done badly. Um, we also hope they'll become champions for us, but how do you do it? What about this? Let's roll a great big endoscopy truck into the parliaments. 
What do you think? Now, I, <laughs> in the UK, I've been trying to do this, and I've got a health minister who's helping me, a health minister who needs colonoscopies every four months, because um, when he was visiting um, a community that had TB, he got it. Um, and uh, bet me money that I'll get that endoscopy truck in there, because we will. So how are we doing? This is the European Cancer Patient Coalition. We're now 300 groups in 41 countries. There are millions of cancer survivors in Europe. This is a voting army, and it has a power. And we're also partners in developing the colorectal cancer screening guidelines for Europe. I, I, I love the words uh, quality assured and accreditation and so on. That's what we should all be about, and we've seen great presentations about that today. Slovenia had the presidency of Europe, and they managed to get all the health ministers to agree to put cancer top of the health agenda. Um, they've also screened most of their MPs and found that several of them had early cancers. This is Liz Lynn. We um, organise MEPs against uh, cancer in the Brussels Parliament, and she's one of the co-chairs. And I organised her a very nice colonoscopy a few weeks ago, or maybe a few months ago now. And so she is now a complete convert. So you watch, that mobile endoscopy truck's, go, truck's going into Brussels as well. Um, the health commissioner for Europe is our patron in the European Cancer Patient Coalition. I haven't suggested to her yet, if this is going out on the web, she'll know before I suggest it to her. But she ought to have a colonoscopy if she hasn't had one already. Okay, I'll go quick. Um, we're developing strategies on how to involve politicians, because this is much wider than just screening. We hold cancer patient summits in their parliaments, and we're particularly looking for the ones that still allow smoking in their parliaments, like Bulgaria. And we take key people in there, and they, they then, um, one of these people there is the chair of the Health Select Committee in the UK Parliament. Um, they announced in that meeting we had in the Bulgarian Parliament that, that their, their um, parliament would go smoke-free. So on the back of that success, we're going to go around all the other parliaments where they still allow smoking. And it was also the last country to join the screening programme. We've managed to get and do that. In the UK, um, I've called the campaign Spot Check. I don't know if any of you noticed I'm wearing spots, but I announced last week on television that if anyone saw me not wearing spots in April, I'd give them $10. <laughs> so none of you get paid. Um, this is another thing I did, went to all the party conferences. Now Labour, current Labour membership, 5,000 of them are going to die of bowel cancer. So we handed out cards giving them that good news. We, gave, we, went, to, we went to the Tory party conferences and did the same. The Liberal party conferences, you could do that in your parliaments, um, because if, especially if you're a large country like, or a large-ish country like the UK, the figures are stunning. Our nurses, 20,000 of our present nurses are going to get colon cancer in their lives, and nearly 10,000 of them are going to die. That's how you get the nurses on board when you tell them that. Um, oh, uh, yeah, OK, we're, we're talking about giving them a flexi-sig, but don't tell the UK parliaments that at the moment, because they might not like it. Um, what else am I doing? Oh, yeah, we're, we're, this is what we're trying to get in the, in the um, European Cancer Plan, where we are partners in helping to develop the Cancer Action Plan for Europe. So we're trying to get them to look at a 10-year plan for screening, SWAT teams from other countries come and help if you need it, um, ring fence funding for pilots. Uh, we're not just going to give you money from Europe and you can go and spend it in whatever way you like. Um, uh, I thought she was lifting a red card there. I'll keep going faster. In fact, I'll just run through this. The foundation that uh, you might have heard Larry von Karsa mentioned earlier. One billion screens over the next 10 years. If you got 10 cents from each and put it into an independent foundation, we wouldn't be reliant on the political machine to look after screening in Europe. There's elections coming up in June. The place is paralysed with a lot of elections. If you had an independent foundation, it wouldn't be paralysed. Let me just quickly come to the last can thing. Breast cancer. So you see somebody wearing pink, fabulous. Now that's a great badge, but anyone over 50 won't know what that is till they come right up to you. They've got to come really up and look at you. So let's think of something big that, that marks out colon cancer for us all. Wear a giant star if you want. I'm just trying to get everybody to look at spots. I've put a whole load of stuff here. We've got Go Spotty for Bowel Cancer Awareness Month. We call it bowels. I wish now we'd call it colons. Um, the British don't like talking about bottoms, but they do like dogs, so we do spotty dog. It's all about spotting the symptoms, spotting bits in your family, spot screening. 
If you want spots, you can have them, you can have any of this stuff here, or pick something else. But let's think of something big for colon cancer, because it deserves it. Thank you very much.